Hello, my name is Natalia and here I'm going to explain bone design and bending stress. I will also explain how the trabeculae changes in response to mechanical stress. Over here we have an example of the femur. Up here where the head of the femur is, is where all the load is, all of the body weight. Over here in the outer surface is where all the tension occurs and in the inner surface is where all the compression occurs and right in the middle there's no point of stress. The tension and the compress compression cancel each other out. Bones are subjected to compression as weight bears down on them or as muscles pull on them. The loading is usually applied off-center, however, and threatens to bend the bone. Bending compresses the bone on one side and stretches it on the other, which is what subjects the tension. Both compression and tension are greatest at the external bone surfaces. To resist these maximal stresses, the strong compact bone tissue occurs in the external portion of the bone. Internal to this region, however, again, tension and, occur and compression forces tend to cancel each other out, resulting in less overall stress. Thus, compact bone is not found in the bone interiors. Spongy bone is sufficient. The spongy bone and marrow cavities lie in the heavy skeleton and provide room for the bone marrow. Now I'm going to explain the trabeculae, how the trabeculae is always changing in response to mechanical stress. It is always changing due to mechanical stress such as exercise, increase of weight, and injuries, lifestyle, and activities. Osteoblasts, osteocytes, and osteoclasts are always working together to remodel the trabeculae in order to provide just the right amount of stress for, for people's needs. An example is if a runner who is regularly putting stress on the bones in the spine and hips, the trabeculae in those areas will start to get larger and stronger and will change the shape to line up with the direction of maximum stress.